In capital budget decision making, we study six fundamental metrics, net present value, internal rate of return, modified internal rate of return, profitability index, payback, and discounted payback. Finding NPV and IRR using the TI cash flow worksheet is covered in a separate tutorial. MIRR is also covered in its own tutorial. With NPV and IRR, there are both calculator keys and Excel functions to find these values. There's an Excel function for MIRR. No such luck for profitability index, payback, or discounted payback. For the two payback metrics, we can set up logical if statements in Excel to find these metrics, but there's no preloaded function. In this tutorial, we're going to cover finding these metrics manually. We're going to use the same cash flow stream we used in the NPV and IRR tutorial. We've already covered finding NPV and IRR in the TI. Excel has built-in functions for both, which are shown here. Note, the NPV function in Excel must exclude cash flow zero from the range. Look at the example. Cash flow zero must be handled outside the function. For whatever reason, when the Excel NPV function was originally created, it was designed to treat the first cell in the range as cash flow one and discount it back one period. Too late to change it now. The IRR function does not have the same issue. You give it the full range of cash flows. Profitability index is a metric that's really closely related to NPV. It's a bang for your buck measure. Profitability index is defined as the present value of the cash flows divided by the outflow. For this project, the present value of the inflows is NPV with cash flow zero added back. Since cash flow zero is negative, adding back means subtracting it from the NPV. In other words, we want the present value of the inflows. Technically, Profitability index is the absolute value of the quantity NPV minus CF0 divided by CF0. In Excel, we would do that with an absolute value function equal ADS. For this project, the profitability index is 1.03. Note, if NPV is greater than 0, then the profitability index will be greater than 1. Before we start working on payback metrics, think about what we're looking for. How many years will it take to recover our initial investment? Starting with the year zero outflow, we add the inflows year by year until our initial investment is covered, until the cumulative cash flow stream turns positive. Looking for when that sign of that cash flow changes, and in this case, it's between years two and three. A basic assumption in finance is the cash flows occur at the end of a period. In this particular case, we assume the cash flows occur evenly across each year. Thus, we need to find out how far into the next year we need to go to exactly cover our initial outflow. In this example, sign changes between years two and three. At the end of year two, we're still short 3950, but by the end of year three, we've taken in another 4500. So the payback year is the year with the last negative cumulative cash flow, year two. The partial year is found as the absolute value of minus 3950 over 4500. How far into year three do we have to go to cover that last 3950? 0.88. So the payback is 2.88. Discounted payback solves a major drawback of payback. It considers time value of money by discounting the cash flows before accumulating them. Each cash flow has to be discounted back to year zero. This can be done manually in your calculator or in Excel. In your calculator, remember how to use the y to the x and the 1 over x keys. Looking at cash flow 3, we would want to divide that by 1.14 raised to the third power. So you would enter 1.14 y to the x 3 equals 1 over x times 4,500. Using the TVM keys is shown in detail on the next screen. In Excel, you can use the PV function, or you can make the divisions manually as shown in the right-hand column. Using the TVM keys manually is shown here. A little bit laborious, but correct. Once you've got all of the cash flows discounted, however you do it, we're going to use the same technique we used for regular payback. Accumulate the cash flows and find where the sign changes. Note, if you accumulate all the cash flows, the final total must equal NPV. Definition of NPV is the sum of the discounted cash flows. In this example, the sign changes between years 4 and 5, so the discounted payback year is 4. The partial year is the absolute value of minus 
divided by 1817-79, or 0.64. So our discounted payback is 4.64 years. Discounted payback will always be longer than payback. A project may pay back on a regular basis, but not on a discounted basis. A project with a negative NPV may pay back on a regular basis, but will not pay back on a discounted basis. As I mentioned earlier, it's possible to set up a series of logical if statements in Excel to find payback and discounted payback. So let's look at an example of using the logical if to find payback. First, we calculate the cumulative cash flows just as we did to solve PB manually. The logical if statement basically tests exactly what we were testing visually. Is the cumulative cash flow positive? If yes, then payback is the previous year plus the absolute value of the previous cumulative cash flow, which is negative, divided by this year's cash flow. If no, then false. Copying that down the column, you'll see the first non-false entry is our payback of 2.88. To find the payback in Excel, you look for the minimum value in the column using the equal MIN function. Because once the cumulative cash flow turns positive, you'll get a non-false entry each year. For now, this should give you a template to follow to find this basic capital budgeting decision metrics that we're going to study.